Welcome back, friends. Our final matchup of the day, Sandbox versus Talon. And yes, Sandbox are qualified to Berlin due to tie breaks and all, so it doesn't really matter when it comes to Berlin, but Talon have not been having the best of stages, and you don't want that to keep trailing into stage three. As we've seen, their success stories all around the underdogs here in APAC, and you don't want to be in that relegations fight. So that is Talon's fight. Welcome back to the analyst, Eskamo Medic. This is Desichu. Hi. It's Fresh, our resident model here in APAC. Beautiful. Here in APAC North. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm just stunned by the beauty. The grace, that I... the beauty, the elegance of this man. Oh, he's a machine. I could watch him pose all day. Thank you. Carry on. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying. Yesterday, well, yesterday and the day before, it was me with his shorts. Now here you are. I don't know, Jack. You got to reconsider being here. I had some very short shots on yesterday. To be fair, it was risky. It was very hot. That's all I'm gonna say. We had to walk to the studio. It was so hot. Jokes, so Whatever. I can't do on broadcast. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about our teams. Talon are yeah. up first. What's up with Talon? Yeah, Talon. They started really well this stage. Five points after two play days. Second place, and everyone was like, "Oh, maybe this stage they are starting to bounce back." And they made a couple of pickups as well. They brought in Marble and Misa, who started out really strong this stage. Misa, I feel, has stayed relatively consistent throughout. Their issue has been, and I hate to pile on one player, Marble. He started on entry to begin with, and now I think last week got pushed across to being on the support role, because in the last two or three weeks, he just has not been the same player we saw on play days one and two. Instead, what they're trying to do here, Talon, is experiment with who to put where. So Hedy, for example, last week was on the entry. As you can see by their game against Cyclops on your screen, it didn't go super well. So they're still in this experimentation phase. I'm pretty sure they're like five points above the relegation zone, which doesn't sound like a lot, but they're on 18 points. And in fact, no, it's six, because the team that's in relegation currently He's on 12 points. They're not doing bad. I don't think they're a massive threat of relegation, but that depends on whether or not they can figure out what to do with Marble and what role he should be playing for them. My big issue was how well they played stage one. Yeah. When they had, you know, the previous five... I mean, Arakazi was a huge loss, right? Was it Arakazi yeah, they had? Uh, no, not Arakazi. It was... Aziz. 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 Aziz, yeah. All the A's. Aziz. Um, so, you know, losing Aziz, is, it's kind of awkward because they didn't have a bad team. They had a team that should have gone into the top four into the playoffs, potentially looked to the Charlotte Major, and they've made these changes. Mm. And you've got to call it how it is. They look like a worse team over the course of this stage. They do. Um, and, you know, I'm wondering if it's kind of a, a secondary effect. When Hedy and Demet came into this roster stage three last year, they took them a stage to get into it. Then they look good. Then they've made another two changes, takes them a stage. So I'm wondering, are they already looking towards stage three? So what about Sandbox on the other side? Qualified to Berlin, no pressure whatsoever. It's got to be a good day at the office for him, Jack. Yeah, it's a party, really, isn't it? They, you know, they they've qualified. They were sat what three hours ago, just waiting to see whether Reject would win or not, and they didn't. So Sandbox qualified without having to play a single game. <laughs> they've done enough. Ideal. Um, they will be expected. They'll be the heavy favourites to win this game. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But they're the heavy favourites for a reason, in the fact that they've got an excellent team full of excellent fraggers who, just on their day, can simply outclass anybody, no matter the strategy. They're getting to a point where they used to be the go-to top team, whereas now things are falling down like less so. You've got uh, Damwon Kier kind of sitting at the top of the roster of the Roost, but give it a bit of time. I think you'll see these guys really get to that top level and being one of the top two teams going to the major. Tells you the whole story. Uh, top two out of uh, APAC in general, probably, yep. that are going to it. But what map will these two, Talon and Sandbox, be playing on? Of course, these two teams know each other very well here at APAC North, but also in the Korean Open, Oregon being banned out. This, that'll be Talon having uh, the final say. They'll take us to Chalet mm -hmm. as they'll start off on the fence. Sandbox on attack. Your thoughts, Derek? Makes to total sense. The three maps I had this game going down to is either Sky, Oregon, or Chalet because they're three maps that I think Sandbox are going to be very happy going to. They are the final three maps that Talon had to ban their way through, so it's literally pick your poison out of those three maps. I think Sandbox are going to have a wonderful time here no matter where they go to. Yeah, I think they're comfortable. Obviously, from Talon's perspective, Chalet is their number two map preference. It's the highest round win rate. You know, they're, they're somewhat decent on it. So it's one that they do like. It's kind of, we've had this a lot today through APAC North, is all the teams are just going to maps is like their number one or two preference. Yeah. Just, if it makes sense for both teams, let's go there and let's fight it out. And that's what Chalet feels like right now. After that Damon Kia victory today against CAG, smashing CAG, really, mm -hmm. Sandbox are looking to do the same yep. to Talon, proving yep. a point before the last game day, because they play against one another. In the that's last it. Game. I think you want to prove yourself going into the major as well, for sure. Equally, it's another day in the office for these boys. They play the way they normally play. They'll have no real issues. There's no reason to get super spicy or anything, right? It's a strange one. It's kind of one where the result doesn't matter whatsoever, but the performance matters to keep yes. that momentum going because you've now made the major. 
Right, and for right. Marble, it's a proving point, I think. He's got to show up today, no matter what role he's on. Got to start delivering, otherwise this could be a very short tenure on this team. All right, well, Des, Fresh, thank you very much. So let's toss it to our final matchup of the day. Sandbox versus Talon. Happen M, take us through it. Thank you very much, Milos. And indeed, we're headed into a game where one of these two teams, well, is qualified for Berlin. So don't really have too much to play for anymore, but their honor and glory. And the other, well, is still in reach of relegation at the end of year. A little bit safe, but maybe a bit more, more pressure behind this game to perform. Yes, the looming threat of relegation is a spooky one. It's arguably the spookiest of any threat, I think, in six, because, well, the joy of promotion is great, and the joy of getting into a major, the disappointment of relegation. relegation is not great. Arguably, I would say it's bad. Yeah, I don't think any of the teams would like to uh, be in no, that I don't. I don't think there's anybody in the history of competition that said, I really want to be right. Hello Major, according to Static. There you have it. They uh, <laughs> they now the Hello Major. Crop that social media person yeah. the sandbox, put it on the timeline, host it. Doesn't matter if they lose or not. They are it. They're in. Now, Ben's coming through. The Doki be first, the Nomad afterwards. It's not two Ben's we see too often go hand in hand. Um, normally he's like a Thatcher to be Ben and like, different operator after that, but see the defense follows the same. Mute, okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good operator to ban, I understand, but it's not an operator we see on the daily. Mute is high, but great. Mute is high focus and presence. Oh, this one makes more sense. Yeah, and I think if you're looking at Chalet as a map as well, my eyes are always drawn to the wonderful chef and remote controlled car driver, Thoris. And what he can sort of bring. So confused, like, chef. <laughs> He's a chef. The cutscene. Yes, no, yes. The cutscene showed that. I remember from our uh, his little food van. From BF our SI game show as well. BFFs with Ash. Oh, that was so frustrating. I'm very sorry. I still I still won though, I have to say that. Yeah, well, you're always gonna win. Caliber Jacob had a, an emotional breakdown, he I did. think, on that stage. Tim did as well. Tim did. About the where is the worst place to step into a Capcom trap? Yeah, yeah, that's a wedding! The, we the answer is a wedding. A <laughs> wedding! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> that was definitely an emotional I'd forgotten roller that. coaster for us all. I had, I had yeah, forgotten I've, that. I've been on there, that's mentally like scarred into my brain. It's right just now. all come flooding back to me. <laughs> but hey, we got a game. Um, no okay. wedding here. So, uh, you know, no wedding room, that is. It was cafe it would be a different story. Small bakery, a wedding. Good place to hide Capcans, apparently. Worst place to step into them. And with these three minutes on that clock, it is Sandbox that starts off on the attack, and it is Talon that leads into their defense. Headed up to, the, to that top floor, so. But that Captain on the board, we might, you know, always see that smoke play coming through, that quick pace of execution as soon as they do want to get the diffuser down. Wow, quick pace and play is something that Chalet can offer Sandbox. Leading in on their attacks is going to be something that works in their favor. That sure doesn't. Shile taken off the board by Hedy. He hasn't quite been able to have the biggest impact on that Zafir role that he has been so good on historically. But, well, luckily, there's a lot of other Sandbox players that can step up. Notably as well, Arakaze, that new pickup that's playing on that sledge role. High pressure, high focus over here towards the trophy side, seeing if they can try and force the players out the opposite. But no catch. It's still Talon sort of holding on. The early minute, the first burns of flashes, and well, maybe now it looks like they start giving up some territory. Oh, good boy just takes it. I was just going to say the bathroom looks like a target-rich environment with all the grenades that are able to be tossed in from below. Talking about them, that's going to be forcing Marble out of that position, take care of his shield, and really make sure he's not allowed to get back in there. That was it. It was very well played. Didn't need to cook it. Wasn't looking for the kill. Was just looking at forcing the play of the space because there's still a minute and a half. Misa and Envy Taylor, one apiece. The spray through just comes together for Marble. Close. The smoke's going to see if he can buy himself a second. Do they know somebody's rotated round? Well, they did just at the end of that, but it's good boy. He gets himself popped up with the finger. The spray comes across the board and the bow of the piano, but the music doesn't quite hit. There goes Hedy, though, finally caught out. Two LMGs are whirring, and Demic at least finds one. This guy in the right hands is synonymous with putting bodies in the ground, but so is Envy Taylor. 
So can he find that final connection? The Capitao has loads of time and pockets of utility left. I believe all four arrows. I haven't seen one get used. So he's just going to pop one close and go for the plant. It buys him this moment because you can't go for the rotate. He's going to get as close as he can, take a lick of damage, but it's a post-plant situation. Had the idea a little bit too late. Envy Taylor still has one more he could try and pop. Throws the drone out so his team can give him intel. And just going to hold from a little bit more of a safer angle down on the stairs. Makes it a bit tougher to get a swing round. And Demick, he's got a very tricky task right now. 20 seconds. And we find ourselves trying to fight ourselves closer and closer. The drone has picked up. He's even finding the confidence to move it. He'll see and maybe hear the Jaeger getting closer. And, well, he's happy to sit. 15 seconds, Demick. You've got to find a route, a run. You've got to do something. 30 seconds have gone. At this point, you've just got to hold F, but it's too little, too late. Demick caught in a million decisions and made one that would guarantee loss which is do nothing. Never Taylor in the end will still kill him though before that diffuser runs out and indeed he was a bit too patient there trying to really like bide his time that he did not have but if we look at the other side as well it was still an incendiary arrow ready to go so if he would have wanted to go for the defuser he could have literally just put it on fire no way that he would be able to stick it through it to the end there and that would have bought enough time as well so Sandbox could have won that on two different occasions they managed to get time in the end Due to indecisiveness on Demick's side, needing, like, he, he rushed through the fire, right call, but then the fuse went down. He's like, okay, that means an LMG is up and running again against me. Need to take this carefully, but took it way too carefully. Have to say, though, um, good comeback from Sandbox to some extent. They lost that very first player. It was a little bit scrappy, especially good boy on that corner was being pinched down by a player in piano, by a player on the half wall. Couldn't really move until the support came in and the half wall was dispatched off somehow still managed to win that one. So, one to zero. And we are headed on to the next side, towards the bar and gaming side. Now, this is often the side where Frost comes through, but lately we start to see that being phased out because there's multiple ways to deal with that. Either you toss a, a bit of an explosive around the corner. Could be an RC Retiro. Could be an impact. Could also be just a grenade. And you don't really have to worry about it anymore. So, other operators being brought instead. All right, Talon, it started off well, an early body, but then good boy just threw himself into the fight. That hot pressure has to be expected from this sandbox roster, which to be honest, once upon a time, they were a bit slower and steadier, but this is a team that has that steady hand and now very sharp claws at the front of it to swipe at any hold you have. And this is one with already swiping. Marble felt himself under a bit of pressure there, pulls back in towards the site. Envy Taylor's getting a little bit more width. The pressure starts up top. Usually you get control of the pillar, get control of the backside and the staircase. And there with one, both of the ADSs didn't notice the Twitch drone and wow, Misa. Oh, that's going to be a very dangerous spot to play now. That is a good ping. Know exactly where he is. However, there could be still someone around onto uh, the staircase near the library, which means it's not completely free to go into. But as the drone's now currently trying to check out the ground floor, four springs are being tossed in and they surely want to put up some pace here. Well, that was it. A very well-played smoke canister it was actually the catch. Came from underneath. They knew that something was going to come behind it. The E1D impactless because there wasn't a body. There's the first grenade. Bounces close in the corner. Does a little bit of damage. The second oh. and the third sure will. They knew where the man was and they make sure they move in behind it. Suddenly breaching and breaking across the bedroom side. Soldier, he's got the tricky choice of let's just get out of here, not try and take one back. Demick's going to go wider and wider, try and find a fight and hope somebody dropped off, but then has a moment to rotate. This could be big if later on. He's definitely trying to put himself in a position where he can strike. I mean, we've seen it before today, how a flank, especially right before an execute onto the diffuser carrier, could be so important. And as some of these benches are being taken care of, it allows Envy Taylor to get a little bit closer, maybe even think about heading towards that doorway, head towards the pantry or supply line and make sure he picks up a kill or two. But that's a good spot. That's just going to be a free kill. Just waiting to see a ponytail pop into view. Didn't quite come round. That shield means he's not entirely confident with the pantry line. The fight up to the top. They're playing the backward side of the shield. The drone gave Shia the first bit, and he finds the second on the back of it. It was a good idea from Talon, but Sandbox had a better one. They have the watch on everything Talon is doing. The second round is Sandbox's. And this one is a lot more confident, a lot more one-sided to some extent. I mean, they managed to take care of both ADS before the warden even realized there was a Twitch Zep going through. So I'm not quite sure if that was the comms being 
particularly loud at that moment in time where he actually missed that first zap and allowed the second one to happen. But after that, good use as well from Sandbox of that opportunity. Three grenades tossed in quick succession. The first one to dislocate him, the second one to catch him as soon as he went back into that exact same spot. And that one will be landing that kill. Suddenly you have the full, uh, the full top floor under control because the player on that staircase is going to be falling back. You're not going to stay there because you are about to get overrun. And as soon as you lose that top floor, you basically lose that round. Sandbox. That's kind of scary. But it is Chalet. Chalet does play well to the side of attackers, and the thing it does well is that Intel game. Watching your own hot drone on the stairs and getting the pressure on it, the Twitch drone that was the catch out there, that's yep. little things on the side of Talon that they need to try and focus down on. Potentially, you know, if you... If you're struggling at drones, it's not always the thing that you know until you start to see them. And then it's strides into effect. You'll see them absolutely everywhere. Playing the mozzie in this role where the mute is gone is maybe something that wouldn't be the worst idea. Yeah, but at the same time, you'll only be able to get three drones, so it's not going to be stopping too much. And yes, it will be able to stop three drones. Uh, max, of course, because they could be dealing with the utility. But like the mute, the mute ban is definitely a good one because it just it gives so much freedom towards oh, yeah. these attackers to just get the drones in anywhere they want. But that will still come around as well because we have a side swap at some point. Now, whether that is at a 4-2, a 5-1, or even a 6-0 in favor of Sandbox, we do not know. Um, but Talon will have the same utility available to them as Sandbox had. Again. Again. They're at least looking for it this time around, but this lack of mute is, you know, it's, it's sometimes when you don't know how dependent you are on something until it's removed here, and just having a mute jammer there might have been a leave it, lay it, and not have to think about it. But here, a Twitch drone is able to just absolutely gut its way through holds, and Kaid at least would have probably got the catch on that one. Ooh. It's waiting to see it come through either side of the hole. He's protecting the claw for everything he's worth, but it's just one man, two eyes, and many different angles that drone can roll through from. I wonder where the second one was placed. The, that one is still close towards the actual drone hole. This is a normal drone. It's not the Twitch drone. He could be just getting it through there uh, still and still get the Electro Claw. So with that set, just waiting patiently now, letting these charges uh, refill and make sure that the Cade is going to have his attention elsewhere now as it did manage to get the top four opened up. So that is going to be forcing these players out of position as well. Here's oh, the oh, pressure. Why is it there? Saw the claw? Why is it up top if you open that one up? Oh, now he's got a free nade to do anything he wants with. He's just kind of handed a bit of the breach. They've pulled themselves back. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be as visible as it was, but it sure was visible. And they've now got this big back line and a black beard. As that potential, I, the difference might be a shot or two on the face. There's a bit of a rotate underneath coming from the side of Trench. They're looking for maybe a bit of control, maybe the fight onto main stairs, get behind the push. If you can pull out one player, it could be huge. But we still see Static watching drones. We still see the eyes and ideas, all 10 players on board. And with 30 seconds, this is when it becomes very important. Whoever gets that first strike, and it seems like it's going to go the way. The spray keeps on, but Misa digs in, gets the angle, keeps that vertical control. The holes come through. MV Taylor's looking for the loose players underneath, but it's Marble to find one more. Good boy's caught out. His usual response doesn't quite hit the mark. Soldier does enough, which is to draw some focus and attention and say, I can be here later. They've got to push into sight. The first smoke is clever. Doesn't get the bulletproof. The spray comes through, I believe, above. It's Misa. There it is. The ping, and with only six seconds, Seconds. Four of them left and no kit. Sandbox lose this round. Talon are able to take it. Talon indeed able to put their first onto the board here. That's very unfortunate on that top floor, by the way, I have to say, because that kind of stopped that whole plan from going through. If they managed to get the Aruni there, then that top floor would not be in play. Would give them a bit of a safer opportunity to go for a plan behind the bomb chassis whilst having to cover there, of course. Didn't need to dig in that deep. Didn't need to go through so much trouble to walk through. And Talon going for a tactical timeout after they just came off the back of a win. It's going to tell you all you need to know. They are into this match to win it. They want to make sure that they pick up the full three points. And that is not because of Berlin, but because of the overall standings. The earlier they grab these three points, the less they need to get for that next stage to actually confirm themselves for 2023. Um, and of course, they will be trying for the major again, but you never really know what will happen. 
Other teams might suddenly step up, might be better than you and might put you into that danger. So everything you can get now is uh, is a big advantage. While Sandbox, they're just chilling at the top. They said it themselves, hello, Major. That they was, did. That, that was their goal for today. I mean, I think that's it with Sandbox here is they're still, you know, you're looking at the game in hand. It's still them versus DK. It's, yes. it's going to be a very fun game. It's going to be a very exciting game. But it's not going to be a do or die game. Both teams confirm for the major. It does. I'm not saying it's going to take all the magic out of it. I'm still very excited for it. But a do or die game is the most magical game there is, Hap. It definitely is. It's when most mistakes come through as well. It's like people feel the pressure. It's, it's where a lot of new strategies get tossed in as well at the yeah. very same time, right? Because it is, well, we got all these strategies. If we don't make it to the major, we don't get to use them. So we better, we better use them now uh, before uh, they can all be tossed into the bin because, you know, uh, operator quarantine gone, which means new operators what? that come out will instantly be available for play. And you know where they get announced? Where are they going to I think that is doing majors, but I could, I could be wrong there. All right. MV Taylor playing the role of the Lion once again. He was obviously that big clutch factor on the very first round. And, well, Static won't be on this. Hasn't quite had a big impact. He has done some big motions before for the team, for Sandbox. Today isn't quite his day. But that's a team that I guess has slowly become a sort of super team to pick up a good boy. And then the acquisition of Arakaze is something that's still running them. And Envy Taylor has always been that consistent across the board for them. I'm going to say super team that actually works. Um, it's not many yeah. of those. It's not like, <laughs> it's not the most famous working no. world. No, for sure. Some good cams out here from the Valkyrie will be providing tons of information. Need to be careful though around these windows because Good Boy's looking to fire a couple of shots through. So just didn't rotate far enough out there. Actually closing off that bathroom window. Not completely. Will still be a very tiny angle, but will be enough for a passage through if you want to. I do love the use of the Azami yeah, there. Just gone. well, and a quick response from the Zofia. Made sure that there wasn't going to be any sort of Heavy structural play, heavy structural hold there. The pressure's coming in across the double window. They're looking again for the bow of the fight. The E1D doesn't quite get anything, but the smoke is forced back. The play is a bit stretched, and they're just going to jump in and jump right out. The cold kit and a bit of a misplay there from the side of Sandbox, getting a bit too big for their boots, but Arakaze at least finds one before Talon quickly finds the rest. Envy Taylor now, all that's left right in the hot pocket, the middle of the fight, finds the head of the first. But with just a self-flash and a bit of a mistake tucked in a corner. And he's only really the one to blame here. Sprays, scrappy fights, and a talent second round. Bit of an opportunistic jump in there onto the bathroom, not checking the Solarium side. I mean, it was kind of a point that we have to go now. We have to just start pushing through. And if you do not have the information, which we praised them for during the first two rounds, that suddenly can get quite bad for you. And that's exactly what went through for Sandbox. Suddenly we're on a 2-2. Two -two. Talent having the opportunity to here to push it up towards a 3-2. Potentially even a 4-2 for themselves. So Frost makes the appearance out here on Game and Bar. An operator highlighted before when it wasn't picked. Let's see if that makes any difference for Talon. I need to stop checking uh, chat. Are people continuing to chat there? <sighs> yeah. I well, feel the buzz. The thing is, okay, well, the buzz, sometimes it's very relevant. Yes. Um, sometimes it's, oh, this is a fun statistic. This is a fun thing. So you check it and you're like, yeah, cool. And, look at, just and, it, spam with and now it's just <laughs> spam. <laughs> Spams are stickers that we've made of each other. I wonder if NAL chat has, if they have their own stickers. I don't think so. No? No. Oh. No. <laughs> But definitely not. <laughs> two, two. Hey, who's that <laughs> in the hands of Static? That is Sense. Nice. What do they do? Our uh, Belgian operator that has, uh, I'm, I'm calling it a light screen. However, there is there's plenty of castles looking for different words to call this. Light um, screen or green screen, I enjoy. Light screen, green ski, uh, screen. I green saw screen? people, yeah, yeah. I saw people uh, proposing the roly poly, but the I'm roly not poly, a big fan of that one. It's fun to say, but, that would be but I don't think mean. it's very. Oh, it's going to be quick. This is going to be a quick push. They're going to get it, it through the drone all again. No, oh, wait. Static was on the other side. I'm so confused. 
Yeah, I mean, they could throw it all the way and cut the rotation down on the split. There's the E1D that once again has got nobody. They're just droning it out. Oh, no, it's arrow play mode. Okay, well, they're definitely not rolling it. Arrow through. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to try and smoke it with the arrow. But then they realized the window wasn't opening. They might well not. I don't know. It seems like a couple of different ideas are coming together. There's the use of the Sens gadget I expected just to cover that. As I said, the split, the corridor. Static's now pressing up onto the door. The smoke's coming through. It's a bit of a spray and a pre-fire. Good boy finds one. The top of the shield is Static's first for the game. Good boy finds another in the meantime over the top floor. And within the snap and a blink of an eye and a little bit more of a confusion, Soldier slips past one. Heady pops and pops off MV Taylor. It's a minute 40, so they still have plenty of time here. The remaining players of Sandbox to try and formulate approach. They were able to get their approach together. The big difference is they're missing the kit and the two remaining Talon players. They're just going to go for the plant, though. Still protected by the Sens. They have their gadget rolled out. There's the backside of one of the two and the second. Well, they know where they are now. The spray finds the first. Caught in the corridor, a bit of a destructive blow over the top with the vertical control and the control of the site and the control of the window. This feels pretty wrapped up. Yeah, this one seems to be done. I'm not quite sure but Static on Sense was able to just walk in after uh, they used their gadget there. It's only up to Hedy in a 1v3 and they're literally everywhere. There's one on top of the desk there, hopes to go for a pre-fire and little did he know there was actually a good boy right on top of the desk that he was trying to pre-fire there and just didn't hit it quite well. Oof. What's this life there? That's another round for Sandbox. And did, yes. Trying to go quick there. She do do that. She do do that. LMG has the heels, gun six, <sighs> grenades. <laughs> do you think it's now, Do we need to make a, make a case for her <laughs> to be picked? And I know we're, we're like hysterically laughing about this, but yes. remember what the first actual team was that started bringing Finca competitively? Who was it? Oh, that was actually the Sandbox team. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that was doing it. I believe it was in Coastline against Cyclops uh, when it started to, you know, come together. I'm not quite sure anymore if it's saying? late 2020 or hang early on. 2021. Hang on, hang on. Sandbox broke hang the game. Yes. Slow down. Hold your horses. Okay, okay so your horses yeah. held. They're held, yes. Cool. You're saying APAC are the reason we have the LMG meta. <sighs> Sometimes, this is a big statement. Sometimes it's better to stay silent. This is a big but they, okay, statement. I don't know if they're the reason to, but they're definitely the ones that used Finca before she became a mainstream operator, right? Like, everybody's using it now, in ranked and unranked and casual and competitive. They did, and they were bringing it before that was the case. So they were onto something, and uh, I don't want to say it was a giant LMG to get away with utility, but I think well, it was I the giant LMG with big utility. Didn't they used to take her with the spear more? Uh, no, I don't think so, because they they used it back when the uh, recoil buff was still present. Like, for everybody. Okay. So, that's why everybody's like, why are you bring thinking? You're just trolling your team, but, you know, ahead of time. That's all we can say. <laughs> She's getting you to say the boldest of statements. And here is one child trying to find a bold statement right the way, root and through, all the way to the doors of the site. Hey, this was the first sort of failure that we had on the side of Sandbox. And it was a little bit of a surprise because some of the moments seemed a bit handed to it. And they're starting the same way. The Twitch drone close through the hole, punishing the lack of mute. The damage that might otherwise come through from... Wow. Well, stopping those drones is not stopped on those drones. So... How can you change what happens next, Sandbox? Which was the struggle on the wall underneath the breach and the fight that came through even with all the utility. Oh, oh there's not a lead in. Misa gets his first much earlier this time. An aggressive swing onto Good Boy. That's not how they wanted that to happen. Grenades are being tossed in, but won't be finding any target. Static now opening up onto that double wall. Misa's thinking, you know what? Naturally, I was thinking, he's, thinking he's going quite aggressive. <laughs> you know what? He stepped forward I'm a right. bit and then he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm just falling back instead. You know what? It's, it's, it's not no staying. No, not going to do that. Um, and now they can start working on opening up the uh, bottom floor one. However, the top floor not completely under control yet. That, that is going to be the big worry here that we saw the last time around. There are also a man down now. So we really need to make sure that they do have someone on that top floor. That is for Sandbox. It's the missing good boy as well, playing that role of the glass. Obviously, we're talking about what Finka can offer, but good boy is that talent that you sort of don't question whatever operator he wants to have his hands on here. Are they going to find soldier? Envy Taylor and a soldier, two ships. Do they know how close they are to passing in the night? Just one soft wall is the difference. 
drone has word its way into a particular position, maybe waiting for just a slither, just a sniff of audio before a spray comes through, but it's this awareness, this catch on the flank as the pressure comes through onto the site itself. They know they've got to start to move, and there it is. Envy Taylor's now able to charge their way up. They're looking for the backside of the chassis. It's instantly locked down. Two stories. Misa wins his fight on the second, Hedy on the first, and now Envy Taylor's got to quickly hot foot it and go for the rotate to offer some support to Shile. I said he was first in. He might be last at this point. 20 seconds without any vertical control itself. There's somebody up top behind him too. There's nowhere he can really go at this point. They've got the pings, they've got the intel, and it looks like Sandbox. Well, oh, they've got themselves another lost round. Talon take this one, I think it's fair to say, but I'll wait the second. There it is, three to three. Good job by them. They're shutting down that push before it really started. And again, openings made. They got that vertical control. They got the uh, horizontal push they could go for. However, after that, nothing really there. Where were smokes? Where were the flashbangs that you needed to actually go for the execute? See, they brought a sense earlier, and I think they were going to be a very good addition here to just roll it through that tonal. Like Love we have sense. seen before. Love sense in that position. It yes. was secrets execute. Exactly. Like, Secret played it, and, and that made me think, like, that would be the perfect thing to do for this execute that they wanted to go for, because, I mean, they had a class on the board, unfortunately died early on, but it still you would have blocked yeah. the lines aside. It's that sort of control is you have an option to play that, and yeah, okay. We have to take the considerations always that this is a team that's qualified for the major. It's not a meaningless game, but the change in how things get sort of driven the seeding or whatnot where they might end up playing and who doesn't really change nothing at this point so how do they factor that's always the thing right like how hard are you going to be playing this game are you going in for your fullest 200 percent to win this game or are you gonna sit back a little bit more play more default rather than your advanced setups and strategies it's always the big question. Now, Talon in quickly with that Twitch drone. We've seen Twitch do a lot of damage so far in this matchup. Not using the EMP dart there onto that Twitch drone. Actually got the bulletproofs destroyed. So, there's quite some questionable stuff happening here and there. I'm not sure if there was any ADSs up on the wall that... Oh, yeah, there is two. Okay, they just didn't render in yet. <laughs> but the Twitch drone is still around and about. Could still come around the corner and just take out those uh, ADSs. I mean, it's rare. Oh. Twitch to have a freebie, and it's rare for Static to have luck like that, or anybody. That's unfortunate. It's that sort of thing. You drive the Twitch drone in from this angle because, well, it might not get watched, and, you know, a split second either way, it probably wouldn't have. They're ready to instantly replace that. Oh, that failed. Yeah, wrong side, side. unfortunately. Just didn't get the clip right, so I'm he's... Blocking something. He's, yeah, it exists, and it causes some angular problems, but not the right amount. Definitely not. Grenade's being tossed in now as well. Actually gives him the opportunity to rebuild it the way he wanted to. So <laughs> it is actually going to be in the right spot now. An extra grenade gets tossed in, but that's going to bounce back off that wall. It's going to again take care of it. A second one gets taken by the ADS though. As Goopoy puts his back towards the window, loses his life. Well, he's able to at least waste a lot of time, but it's very quickly Talon striking all across the board there. So many bodies taken out of Sandbox. The two remaining are trying to fight their way back into the site. They're going for the kit plant. The prep line has been taken over. It's a spray through, but Mises just keeping their head down. Oh, almost swung around, but Marble gets the double. They went hyper aggressive there. Sandbox and Talon swiped it back. Might have worked if one would have ran and the other one would have been there for uh, the cover. You could have potentially stopped the plant, but you were always going to be losing one out of those two players. Now Kitchen Dining coming up for a sandbox. They just lost that one. Let's hop on to the next. They say, as Talon, they take that lead. After not really being in a position where they could have been in the lead before up until just now. And we were just talking about how important this matchup is for them. Not for Berlin. That story is done. That book is closed. It's going to be Sandbox Gaming. And, of course, that one Kia that will head over to Europe, to Berlin but it is more important for the end of stage three, for your overall standings, because Talon is one of those teams that is currently just three, four points away from being in a relegation seat, and you want to avoid that. So you want to pick up these points now to give yourself the extra buffer during stage three. Now, every other like uh, region has nine games per stage, but APAC, they have seven. 
which means that a six point lead means more in APAC than it does in EU or in A. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the confirmation. No, that's why I'm here to confirm things. And I guess what we're getting confirmation so far is Sandbox, they don't quite have this as locked down as you would have expected. But again, it's different. I think that's the thing is there's so many other facets that come into this game that means that you're getting a good taste of Talon. It's the Talon that we sort of had at the very beginning. They're doing some good plays. That was a very quick execute. That was very yeah. across the board. We didn't quite see the full pressure on prep, but we know it came through based on the positions that they were in at the end. They're still sort of growing. They're still sort of getting that, but... It's that sort of game right now for Sandbox, where there's mistakes that I think are happening on their end that haven't really happened in other games this season. No, for sure. And I mean, if you, if you just looked at their executes towards the uh, kitchen dining area, I mean, there were no executes. It was open up the wall and start running in and hope for the best. Well, the best didn't really happen. If Soldier just wanted to use a Gon 6 there to get rid of a proximity sensor, but... Oh, has been removed, okay, but the camera was still on, so they will be aware of his position and that he did go in. Did get dispatched off quickly, though, but the top floor is currently being attacked here by Talon, trying to take that and the control as quickly as they can. Issue, however, is good boy currently in this position next to a double door to fall back to, and Static waiting with a keeper barrier to just block off the piano window. I love the way that they're playing with the keeper barriers, but they lose the life of the player just in front, almost catches the head of a fleeing tail round on the corner two grenades once again burnt either side and well, that means that they're kind of struggling with that utility luckily they were good at striking behind the back of it the pressure that they still put on can still be utilized for something and here it seems to be that approach the gridlock the track sting is not the most common scene thing but it will buy them at least some control of the momentum here and that seems to be the next pressure point that next step here, holding very aggressive static. Are you going to see somebody? Ooh. No, you're going to break your own barrier. Fell right through it, stepped onto it a little bit too much, and it's not only supporting the weight of the operators here, so will break at that given moment in time, and that kind of removes his cover, but he is still up above, and that's the most important part. And those gridlocks, track stingers, they kind of tell me they don't really feel like going there, and, you know, static just says, you know, I can just get impacted away as well. Very, very close to the wire there, looking for the fight either side of that chassis, but 30 seconds and vertical control, well, it's still sort of in the favor of Sandbox, even with all the bodies gone, and we've seen that. On the side of Talon, even with less, they've made it work. A grenade almost catches the side of Envy Taylor. Two pockets full of smokes in 20 seconds. He's in a good place for this. They're being very aggressive still above. They're just sort of locking the door and saying nobody is able to get in. It's entirely found itself either side, goes deep. Looks for the fight right on the breach itself. There's one to his right, doesn't see the legs, but goes for the planter instead. It's a five versus one. They take the verticality, but they can't escape. Talon find another round. And Talon will live on here. It looked to get quite dicey there. I mean, a smoke canister, a smoke playing close onto the wall as well. I think a shotgun could have done even more damage there, taking them one by one as they walked in. But the panic was there because of the side hallway. The side door was currently being pushed at that moment in time as well. I was going to say, is that not a tactical timer for Talon? I think we already saw that one. So sandbox instead. There we go. It makes sense. Things it does. Are sort of going away from them. They're having problems. <laughs> not everything is working as it normally does. Not would. everything is working as it normally does. A couple of problems. Yes, but at the same time, like, they don't need to perform now. They still want to. Don't we, get me wrong. I, I guess that's the thing. is we, we can say that however much. It's not that we're giving an excuse to the performance. And, you know, they're obviously frustrated. They want to win this. You want to win every game that you're up against. Yeah. These two teams know each other very well. Obviously, same sort of region competitors. There's history between these rosters. And Talon, they, they're where they are on the leaderboard might not belie the performances that they've been capable of. Now, Talon has definitely been capable of being uh, that top four team. And if they win now, even then, they will be ending up in fifth, at least for now. Um, and it's just crazy to think that Talon is currently finding themselves in a relegation dangerous area. So they can climb out of that, don't get me wrong. That that's This game is not going to be completely confirmed, but it's definitely removing a bit of that pressure that might be upon them because uh, the three that are closest to relegation, of course, all within one or two points now. But the thing about Sandbox is, and we're not making up excuses, 
Yeah, right. well, that's the thing. You're never going to sort of say this stuff. No. That it's, it's like we're not saying they are qualified, thus they will play badly, because they won't. They will still give it their all. They won't just maybe not use the most up-to-date strategies that they have. Maybe the timing is a bit more off, but that's also the relief. Like, the pressure is off. You do no longer need to perform. Yeah. That's a big difference in mood swing there, because suddenly, like, you can afford to be a little bit less focused in these last two play days when you truly start to prepare for Berlin. You trip there and the play, uh, the games that you play over there. So... I'm not saying it's an excuse, I'm just saying it's a factor that plays into this. Well, here's a bit of a breach onto the snowmobile side. They're trying to find a steady route through, and now we find Talon obviously not screaming into the lead, but putting a fair few rounds in a row against the team that you feel like should be able to bite back. And also, you're up against, you know, a map where attackers do well. If you're losing some of your first choice sites, You've got to try and find a way to at least break the mold. Bring yourself that 4-2. Usually here it's got to be even better, the 3-3. But look at this. Talon already slapping their way onto this west main take. It's just under a minute's passed, or just over a minute has passed even. And they've already got that wall open. They get the wall opened up. Marble went for a uh, one-punch fall. We don't really see those anymore. Actually, hey, uh, quite common. kind of like those because uh, you open it up just slightly, then one-punched it. But opening up the long angle as well. And if you watched him uh, ever rant about this side, this is he almost does. all you need. Ooh, music is a beautiful headshot onto Static, by the way. The one missing chapter is the hatch. It's currently not under control. That is Arakazi. He's out there. He can stop the default plan from happening. He has to run it over there. And that is the next factor they need to deal with. MV Taylor is also quite close, playing near these staircases here. Gets spotted out on that drone. Now that is going to give away the fact and the ID towards telling that indeed someone's out there. Sounds like a smoke. Just did a bit of damage there to Hedy. I'm not sure if they were trying to go for a breach or a broach or an approach, yeah. but... How's he not taking damage? I don't think that's real. Because that was just smoke. holding his breath. I think that was okay. a smoke canister we heard um, before that one would definitely do it. That definitely will there. To take over the top, finds the second, and that's why this hatch is so important. Arakaze able to do big work. 30 seconds. It's going to be tricky to go for a big retake here. They've got control of the site, but with that kid underneath there. Oh, it's a Claymore that finds Envy Taylor. Shile, they're behind you. Shile, they're in front of you. Swings around, gets the fight, gets caught out. Now the one versus two. Arakaze, concerned about somebody coming from above. Talon have to play this perfectly. The pings are still there. The awareness and where that kit is. There were my just to make sure nobody gets a cheeky play around it. Comes into life at the second, finds one, just has to pull back, looks for the spray. Ooh. Iana, they pick it up, they hop foot it round to the other side. They're going to hope the time, time, the couple of seconds, plus the plant time is going to be enough. Will he find them? Yes, Arakaze's round. He, <laughs> yes, exactly. He literally did everything there. He was just playing on that hatch, was never really challenged. Just stood up there, walked two people, walk in, saw someone trying to go for the retake of that diffuser afterwards with just a couple of seconds left on the clock, and then all he had to do was wait until that timer hit zero to drop down and secure the round. So well played by him there. Definitely his round. He did basically everything right there. You can almost call it a solo round. Um, I think there was still a kill from someone else in blue, but th th that's about it. So, well played. Uh, four to five. Talon unable to go to a match point here. And it seemed like they might have been able to do so because the openings were there so quickly. And as I said back then, the one chapter missing, the one part missing, is the verticality. Is that hatch not under control? And you know what they could have done? They could have even gone up to the top floor, just smack open a little bit with the uh, sledgehammer. Just, just smack it open. Just, just make sure that there is the vertical pressure of the player there so he doesn't feel as comfortable playing that hatch, but they didn't do that either. You don't need to remove him. Just make him think there's someone watching him. What you need is that meme of, like, the handshakes, and it's Tim. Yes. Arakaze. And it's understanding the importance of that hat. Yeah, exactly. We, we need to get that out. <laughs> Social Tim, media manager. Tim Arakaze and snowmobile hat. Shall, shall I hat? Yes. It's, it's a dining hatch, I think. Yeah. I don't know what it's... Yeah, I guess. Is it wine or is it dining? dining. Do you call it the room above or the room the dining below? Wine dining there wine hatch. There we go. Hatch. Whining. Okay. Whining. The whining hatch. It's the whining hatch. Because Tim never shuts Tim up about it. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. 
30 seconds gone, Talon. They've not entirely had the roll now. They've dropped one, but a threat of three before, and now you're back to sites that you've won before. Is it going to be something where we might get another bit of that sudden pace that I'm not going to say it entirely took Sandbox by surprise, but I think a lot of this game has been not out of their element, but not in it. Well, that's a push drone early taken out now, not taking out any of these. Um, ADSs that are deployed there. Did take care of the bulletproof camera, though. Might be actually an early warning sign that they put it down there, so at least they know. The Gemini Replicator in far and then off beyond it. Two people currently near the library, two near that big window. They want to go for a quick push, it seems, on Talon. Well, a quick push might start to come through. These armies doing the same work that they did before. A bit of a blind, a bit of a flash, and a little bit of... Devastation, but the bodies are the ones that are trying to find their way back through. It's static. Look at that. They're planting. Misa inside the smoke, inside the site. They don't quite know. The spray's over the top. Arakaze. Wow, he was caught sleeping there. They are going to find their way back out. They at least put a bit of aggression in. Envy Taylor dropped the hatch and took the fight itself. Some Candela's post, but a bit post-mortem. 30 seconds. Envy Taylor's going to see if he can stick it. They're just going to hope that the cover comes oh. through. Arakaze finds the fight, the shotgun, but it's above that becomes the danger. Now they've retaken that territory too. Do they know where the last two are? One's outside. They're going to hope that's wide enough to stop the spling. But look at this. The grenade is going to bounce its way around. They go for oh, the fight oh, soldier. and a soldier that locks in the double. That grenade didn't get anything, by the way. It landed right behind that little couch area, so it wasn't going to kill anybody of the shrapnel out there. So needed to swing, and we'll get them both. And I'm going to tell you, that's a 21-round magazine. It's not big. It's not an it's LMG, not right? If you get that first, you maybe have seven, eight shots left in the magazine. And he managed to get the second one, of course, on that defuse there. I'm not sure if he can get that last moment in slow motion, because that timer was almost down oh, on was zero. was it one of them? I think it was. One of those. I'm just requesting it now to production as we uh, production? as we go on. Yeah. Our lords and saviors. I'll request medics to say something down our microphone. Did he speak to you? Because he didn't speak to me. Okay, here we go. This is the first kills that come through. 21 seconds. Oh, it was an LMG. I, th I thought it was the uh, the RRX endemic. Well, I, I retract top that left, statement. Top left, top left, top left. 1.1. One. 1.1. Okay. So there's still, still some room there. Still. But it's still close. I mean, the, the time of them being able to get in and get the plant done was was almost just as quick. Was right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I retract the statement of the ARX. I thought, okay. I thought it was the ARX, but it was the LMG, which <laughs> does explain the full pre-fire around the corner. Um, but yeah, good, good stuff from Soldier there. Making sure they're a match point. Making sure they grab that point and now have the opportunity to fight for a full three. So that is their goal, of course. Get away from that bottom part of the table. Start breaking into the middle of it. As uh, they're en route to do so. Oh, it's kind of close now for Sandbox. I'm not going to say they're in the trickiest situation, but two rounds to get on your defense on Chalet when you're on map point, it's not easy. That's a fair way of putting it. Uh, no, it's, de it's definitely not easy. Um, easy Siege, observer. Siege isn't easy, that, that's that's for sure. No. Easy the observer's already done. His heart was broken as soon as he got off for reasons. His favorite game was in uh, patch mode. Fortunate for him. One of his favorites. One of his favorites game, that, that, that's true. But yeah, um, match point, 4-6. Can Sandbox come back? Will Talon close it out? It's big questions have to be answered here. Again, they will start opening up on Talon. Do the exact same as what Sandbox did on their attacks. A bit worried, though, of a potential run-up from the snowmobile area near the main stairs. Stenic is going to be quite aggressive here. Has, of course... Uh, the Kiba Barrier blocking off some lines aside. He can play aggressively behind that. I like what Envy Taylor is doing. He's creating these angles where they can actually prone fire through to stop anybody from potentially putting that diffuser down. So they're creating alternative angles here because they know what the setup and what the execute will be. They're looking now for us. I mean, yeah, it's a stacked up table. They, they have everything they need. They do, um, but there is a Flores coming through. Well, so. this is it. This is the sort of operator I talked about before at the very beginning with the mute banners that Flores can be huge because... 
Well, that, that's just going to blow up. Later yeah, ago. the um, so that's the EMP from the bulletproof. It has there we go. a little bit of life left. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Does it recharge just as quickly? I surely not. Yes, it does! <laughs> That's perfectly timed! All right, they open up the wall in the meantime. We have one person on dedicated camera duty there to make sure that, that camera stays up. Because at some point... That, oh, it's oh, gone it's now. Gone. <laughs> I was going to say, that's beautiful now. Three times I managed to zap it. After that, they lost it because the pressure was coming through. The opening has been made. Grenades are being cooked and need to come in far, but actually hit the table. And that means both those goo mines are now out of play. Wow, with Static still with the vertical control. We talked about the importance of this before, but Marvel's going for a slightly different take, where you go in oh, behind right him. around the corner. There's an easy take there, and now they can pull themselves further and further along the top. But look at the timer, 10 seconds, and that's a huge take. Round on the side, Charles going to cause a bit of a problem later on. The kit is cold, five seconds. They're trying to drive it in through the room. A little bit, little, a little bit too late now. Mies is all that's left, but they at least get one of the two rounds that they need. They do get them indeed. One more, and they managed to go to OT. Maybe Taylor talking heavily to the rest of his team. They're trying to make sure everything aligns here because there's one more round where they need to survive before they will get some points and have the opportunity to fight for two. And of course, they don't want this to happen. They want those full three points to ensure themselves a bit more safety throughout stage three. We're really looking forward to that because the rest of these games... They won't matter anymore for Berlin. All they do is either confirm or deny your participation. I still can't believe that camera thing. <laughs> that is beautiful. It's like, surely that isn't <laughs> like... on the same timer, but it is on the same timer. Ultimate counter. You can you can perma stun a utility piece there. Take that, Flores mains. <laughs> your biggest enemy is now officially... <laughs> Someone on a bulletproof camera yes. that does not leave the bulletproof camera or plays it in like five second increments. It's, it's, okay, this is a bit like the uh, the event where you could like spawn through the cameras. Like the cameras are basically oh, your yeah. live as well. We missed that event. Or I yeah, missed that event we I missed here. it as well because we were here. We can yeah. play it uh, back then. But it's like, you know, that's how important that camera was. They need to make sure it stayed left there. And there's no other way to destroy it than with an explosive. So it's like, <laughs> it's, it's always going to blow up at some point. That's for sure. All right, 5-6 now, and we're finding ourselves closer and closer to OT. Maybe another one here. That is down to Sandbox. Talon, they're still playing very, very well, if a little bit late on that last one. They were trying to solve a problem that ended up being kind of deep into the round itself. When they can do things like this and the other round, the sandwich on the other side of the loss was pace. They're looking at their way in here. They're looking at a very quick breach. There's the sort of push through on the Wamai. The claw's going to be picked back up. They're going to see if they can try and bait it and play it again. There's the beautiful first stun. Oh, the There's the grenade. Will it get the catch? No. The EMP play and the balance and lack thereof soft, is though. just played off the grenade. Is it soft? Yeah, the wall's left soft. They still need to soft breach this. Oh. It's unfortunate. I mean, luckily, it's one of these that doesn't have any of these... Uh, beams in it, so they can open it up with some high caliber. So that's exactly what Mies is doing with that Deagle. It takes some work. A grenade's getting used now as well, just to make sure that that opens up. It's rolling a bit too far back and won't do any damage. Oh, no. Would have been better if you managed to get that in between the two panels there. That would have completely destroyed that wall. I mean, you still have it as an angle, and I know I'm really looking for silver linings there, but to be honest, most teams don't try and run the plant through it. The threat of it being a run the plant through is quite a big one, but it's an angle still. You can try and isolate the players that are in that position here, and Taylor talking of isolating himself on the exact opposite side of the map. Misa has an idea. But with a minute 20, they know time was a problem for them before, and they know they've lost this site before based on the play and the control of the hat. Will they pay attention? You kind of hope so. And that's where it seems like Soldier and Marble are looking for it. There's the reveal on MV Taylor, though. They knew somebody else would come. Does he know someone's right there around on the corner? Is he going to try and survive for as long as possible? Either way, a heavy rotate from the side of Talon. They don't need it. Marble Ooh. is able to catch MV Taylor, and now <laughs> Rikaze knows he has every single crosshair angle towards him. Yeah, that's the thing. I was going to say, that one player, Arakazi, again on top of this hatch. He was the win condition the last time, and he's dead now. Very easy. They're very easy pickup. Shaw will find a bit of a trade, though, but now the big worry is they can start to dig themselves in deep. It's only up to Good Boy now that is playing around the pillar that could potentially go for a deny. Static behind that shield. There's still opportunities to play here for Sandbox, but their hold just got significantly weaker. Oh, Demic trying to drive himself through onto the site in the plant spot itself. And with Marble getting one more, it's looking likelier and likelier. Marble, he's cre just 
destroyed his way through the site. I don't even know what word I was gonna say. I was gonna I'm say not he's like, either, but he's we... like, I was gonna say screaming, and then I forgot the S. But either way, yeah, it's yeah. a victory here for the side of Talon. I think I've had a little bit too much caffeine. Too much caffeine? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but Talon managed to pick up three very important points for their battle to stay in Apex 2023. I know it's far ahead. We're basically only like halfway through the year just now. It's like it's July. I'm yeah. talking about the next of March when we start getting going again. But that's something that these teams need to worry about. They cannot go to Berlin, so we'll just do the next best thing, which is ensure professional careers through Apex North. And they are screaming their way through what was finally another win. Finally, some more points on the board for Talon. Sandbox, they're still confirmed. They still have Demon Kia as their next showdown. That's next week. Before that, a break and a desk. Bye.